Welcome back to our channel, Rocket League fans. This channel has covered many different topics related to Rocket League and its wonderful community, many of which even chronicled the stories of some of the brightest shining stars of the esports community of the game. But one thing we never talked about is Rocket League itself. While it may be an incredibly popular game today with millions of dollars being given out in cash prizes every year, it wasn't always this giant game to start with. After all, the game has been around for almost a decade, so it's no surprise that it took its time in becoming what we know and love today. And that is the topic for today. Let's take a look at Rocket League throughout the years and learn its story. It all began on October 9, 2008, when a developer called Psyonix released a video game called Supersonic Acrobatic Rocket Powered Battle Cars. Yes, that name is a mouthful. And even its shortened version is still Sarp Battle Cars, which is not very catchy as a name. Anyway, this game is pretty much like an early version of Rocket League, and it only came out on the PlayStation 3. If you looked at it without context, as of today, you'd expect that game to be an alpha build of Rocket League. But at the time, it was the only form in which that game existed, and it introduced us all to playing soccer with vehicles, as absurd as that concept may be. While Sarp Battle Cars had a very short life, it laid down the groundwork for what the company would do later on. And before Rocket League, the company only made a few small-time games, did contract work for others, and they have a few cancelled projects such as Proteus, Vampire Hunter, The Dark Prophecy, and Nazgoth. Although Nazgoth did see a playable release, it was shut down shortly afterwards despite the fact that it was a part of the Legacy of Kane series. Having earned some money from Sarp Battle Cars and contract work, the team decided to make a sequel to the game. The development started around 2013 and it took under $2 million to develop the game. They originally tried to get it published by others, such as through EA, but their pitch was never successfully accepted. Some key aspects that they kept in mind were that the game should be more accessible to newcomers as Sarp Battle Cars was considered a bit hardcore and difficult to get into and the game needed 60 FPS to run smoothly as well. They toyed with many ideas in the game, such as that of power-ups, but those ended up making the game unbalanced, and they also tried to make the cars handle in a more gritty manner, which can be compared to games like Twisted Metal. But then, they realized that it works best as a game that feels neutral in tone instead. Other changes that the developers managed to do with Rocket League were giving it dedicated servers, enabling cross-platform play, and better matchmaking than they have ever implemented in a game before. Interestingly, they did consider making the game free to play in the past too, but they changed their mind at the time due to the fact that DLC and other similar practices were shunned by the community. So, the game was released with a proper price tag. Rocket League finally came out on July 7, 2015 on the PlayStation 4 and PC platforms. The game was unveiled as a sequel to Battle Cars at first, but the marketing approach this time around was different. Developer Psyonix teamed up with YouTube and Twitch streamers by giving them early release copies, which spread the word of the game. And the game also launched with an early alpha and beta build that let players test it out before it was officially released. As soon as the game came out, it was an instant hit because of its unique gameplay, polished mechanics, and the fact that it was a game that anyone could get into. Easy to pick up, hard to master. Within just a few years, the game crossed 6 million sales and won several awards for its unique concept and the fact that the developers did an excellent job at adding more content to the game. Whether it was the cool vehicles, cosmetic items that gave no gameplay advantage, licensed music, or seasonal events, everything kept players hooked for years and the developers consistently added more and more to the game. There was a time when the coolest thing you could do in the game was just an air dribble in its earlier builds, but now the list of all the tricks you need to learn is massive, which we have covered on this channel in our guides too. As of 2020, Rocket League has sold roughly 10 million copies, some of which included retail releases too, although mainly it sold digitally. And it was not only the greatest success for Psyonix, but it's also one of the best selling games in the last generation in general. Since the game falls under the sports genre, it was no surprise that fans started hosting tournaments amongst each other. It was similar to FIFA tournaments, which is another very competitive game and also has soccer as its focus. But of course, the fact that in Rocket League you play with vehicles makes it something that people who normally don't like sports enjoy too. The esports scene of Rocket League grew very fast and before we knew it, there were giant tournaments being organized with massive prizes. The very first official Rocket League Championship Series took place on March 2016, which had a $55,000 prize pool. 
And as of today, we have prize pools as high as $6 million, and that number just keeps growing further and further every year. The most noticeable change occurred when Epic Games ended up purchasing Psyonix in May 2019. This meant that the game would eventually go on to being exclusive to the Epic Games Store, and it led to review bombing on Steam too. Those who owned it on Steam could still play it, but it could no longer be purchased there. And this also led to the Mac OS and Linux versions of the game being shut down, which did lead to some backlash, but the developers revealed that these platforms represented less than 0.3% of the total player base. And the developer ended up giving full refunds to those who played on that platform too. Eventually, the game became free to play on all platforms on September 23rd, 2020, and it also meant players no longer needed subscription services like PS Plus, Nintendo Switch Online, and Xbox Live 2, which was a substantial win for those who don't want to pay so much for random services just to play online multiplayer. Now, the only way the game earns money through are sponsorships, tournaments, and in-game microtransactions. And this decision seems to have been the best one the developers could make, because they are consistently making millions in revenue from the game's success even today. Although Rocket League was a sequel to an existing game, Psyonix has revealed that they don't intend to make a sequel to Rocket League. Instead, they are committed to updating the game in the future as much as possible, and they will continue to see what new features and mechanics they can add to the game. A mobile spin-off of Rocket League was released back in 2021 called Sideswipe, which features the same core gameplay of Rocket League but takes place in a 2D space, which gives players a unique new way to experience the game. Even if we won't get a sequel to Rocket League, this is a great way to try something different. And that is the story of Rocket League. It took hard work, money, time, and years of careful development and upgrading to finally become the game that we know today. But regardless of how much it has improved, even its early builds with the first ever season still holds a special place in our hearts. There really isn't any other game like Rocket League, and I'm glad that it has such a wonderful community who I can share its passion with. I hope you enjoyed the history of Rocket League, and if you want to check out other topics, make sure to explore more of this channel.